Hey guys, today is Monday, uh, February 24th. It is 7.53, about 8 o'clock p.m. And um, yeah, I wanted to do another video, go over some of the things that have been happening here locally, things that have happening in Asia, in uh, nearby countries, and uh, some other things to keep in mind when we look at uh, figures and, and such. Uh, I realize there are a lot of other channels doing similar things. There's a couple of really good ones. Uh, MedCram is one, they're, they're very good, doing almost daily updates. And there's another one with a Dr. John Campbell, uh, who's doing uh, excellent uh, daily uh, updates on this thing. And I've been trying to keep up with as much as I can with, with those videos as well. <clears throat> um, so they're doing a really good job explaining the medical side of this, and I'm not going to act like I'm a doctor or an expert in, in any of this. Um, however, uh, having been here and seen what's happened here in China and what is continuing to happen, I'm still very concerned because I don't hear... Um, other people that are talking about this mentioning some of the things that are going through my mind and some of my particular fears. So I still want to continue making these videos and, and kind of inform you from my unique perspective on things. So first, how things are going here? Well, you know, it's it's recently we've talked about this this idea of having mixed messages, right? So on the one hand, we're getting messages saying don't go outside. Uh, and the gates are still locked in the neighborhood, and you can't really. There's a lot of areas you can't get to. Um, and then on the other hand, we're getting a lot of information saying, "Oh, good news! There's less and less cases every day." And 21 provinces didn't report any new cases yesterday. We got that message, um, which is giving people this sense of, "Oh, we must be through this now. This is almost over. Let's go out." And in fact, that's what's happening in some areas. So uh, this morning there was a news article that in two provinces, one in uh, one is Sichuan, the other one Guangdong, two of the cities there had people, mass gatherings of people going out and uh, eating and drinking without wearing masks, uh, queuing up for restaurants to get their favorite meals. And on the one hand, you can understand this kind of behavior because that's the message they've been getting is that things are getting better, so it's okay, let your guard down. And also being cooped up for a month is very difficult to do. And you want to get outside, you want to resume your life as much as possible. So you can understand it. Um, but immediately there was, of course, a backlash against this, both from people in the community here in China that saw this behavior and, you know, criticized these people for basically wasting all the efforts, uh, you know, of, of the Chinese that are, um, you know, quarantining themselves and locking down their cities. But uh, in any case, that was that was a thing in the news and a lot of people there were there were things coming out from officials as well saying this thing isn't over get back inside don't go outside unless you have to for work so when you see that kind of thing it, it does make you feel like well we'll have to wait another two weeks and see if there can be more outbreaks now because there's no sense in you know maintaining uh, distance from one another if you're going to throw it all out the window um the first chance you get so we'll see what happens with that now, outside of China, the numbers are increasing very, very quickly. Last time we talked about two countries, Italy and uh, South Korea, and both of those countries have increased uh, dr drastically, uh, both in terms of the deaths reported and in terms of the confirmed uh, infected. So let's take a look at those numbers real quick. But before we do, there's something else that I think is really important that I want to talk about, and I haven't seen anyone else mention this before, and it's a little curious to me. Um, because we hear, in talking about diseases, we often hear the term mortality rate. So what is the, what is the percentage of people that get the disease and die? And often we use that mortality to kind of gauge how fearful we should be of a disease, right? So on the high end of the spectrum would be something like Ebola. Now there have been various Ebola outbreaks, they have varying levels of mortality, but uh, on the very extreme end, the most serious is a 90% uh, in, uh, mortality rate. So that means 9 out of 10 people, 90 out of 100 people are going to get this thing and die, which is really, really, really scary. So that's why Ebola is one of the most feared uh, infectious diseases. Now on the low end would be something like the uh, seasonal flu. Uh, we have heard a lot about the seasonal flu being especially bad this year uh, with over 70,000 dead, and that is a, a very large number. But percentage-wise, um, it usually ranges from about 0.7% to 1.3 percent. That's looking at the last 10 years from 2010 to 2018 or 19. That's about the average for the uh, mortality rate per year. So that's on the low end. So 90 percent very high, 1 percent very low. So where is this thing? Where is the coronavirus? Well, a lot of uh, media and even myself included 
was originally saying 2 to 3 percent. And the way we were getting that figure is looking at the total number of cases and then looking at the reported deaths and just doing some simple division, right? So you take the num number of deaths, you divide that by the total number of cases, and you get that percentage. But there's a problem with that. The problem is that the current infected numbers, or the overall infected numbers, include newly added cases, newly diagnosed cases. Now, those people might end up dying, or they might end up recovering. It's too early to know. So by including that figure, we're not really getting an accurate picture of the mortality rate of this thing. So how do we figure that out? Well, one more accurate way of determining how deadly a disease is is by looking at the closed cases. So let's take a look at that now. Now if we go down here, there's a chart that shows us the closed cases. Now these closed cases are cases that have been resolved one way or another. So either the people got better, they were discharged, or they died. And what we see is out of the 27,000 reported closed cases, and again, you know, these numbers, I've said it many times, but they're obviously very, very low. We know that they're not reflecting the real numbers, but these percentages are probably pretty close. But of these reported closed cases, 25,000 of them, or 91%, have recovered and were discharged. But that leaves 2,626 cases that did not recover and in fact died. This percentage is a more accurate reflection of the actual mortality rate, 9%. Now, 9% is a lot closer to SARS than it is to the common flu. We hear a lot of people comparing this to the common flu, but that mortality rate seems to be quite a bit higher. Now, SARS originally was thought to be 9%, uh, have a 9% mortality rate, but actually they went back and later revised it because they looked at the numbers and realized it was a little bit higher, about 14 to 15% mortality rate. Now, what's especially worrisome when we look at this is not just the closed cases, but the active cases. So these are cases that are not yet resolved. Now, of these 51,000 active cases, 11,000 of them are in serious or critical condition. That's 22%. So this is quite a bit higher than 9%. So what we're saying here is that if these 11,567 don't recover, let's say half of them recover and half of them die, well then that number will remain about the same, 9%. But if this number does not resolve, if they do not recover and they die, well then this percentage is going to increase. It could very well be that the end mortality rate of this disease, when everything is said and done, when all the cases are resolved, will be a lot closer to SARS than it is now. So that's just something to keep in mind. We hear a lot of uh, news sites, a lot of people, especially the ones that are kind of skeptical about how serious this is, they use that figure. They say it's only 2% mortality. It's only 3% mortality. But it doesn't look like it really is so low. It looks, just looking at those resolved cases, that it's quite a bit higher. Now, again, most of these cases are from China. And those people, the general health, possibly uh, genetic conditions among the Chinese, they might be predisposed to this. Um, or you know lifestyle factors or whatever could be skewing the numbers a little bit we will have a better idea of the actual mortality when this thing spreads more across the globe when there are more deaths being reported but as it stands it seems to be quite a bit higher than the three percent that many of us had originally said so this is something worrisome now let's look at the specific numbers now China has continued to increase uh, this number, the new cases, is coming down every day. Now, whether that's real or not, I, I don't know. I can't comment on that. Um, but it is still going up, and these deaths are also going up every day. This is quite a bit more than yesterday. Yesterday was 100 deaths. Now we have 151, so that's a 50% increase. But we do expect to see more and more deaths because there are so many unresolved, serious, critical cases. Now, in Korea, this number has continued to increase Again, going up 231 since the last report, now at 833, very quickly going to be going over 1,000. And the deaths also are going up very quickly. Um, but I think of, of all these countries, the one that is most worrisome and the one that is getting more and more coverage uh, on the news is Iran. Now, I remember seeing Iran first show up in the tally, uh, I think it was about four days ago, maybe five days ago. It wasn't a week. Um, it was a few days ago. And what was so concerning about it is that there were two reported cases and both were dead. So that means that they only found out that they had the disease, or they only reported it, once they were confirmed dead. So that's very worrisome, because if you have two dead, 
then you probably have many, many more infected people that came into contact with those two or possibly people that came into contact with the person that infected them. And those numbers have gone up about the same. In fact, for the last few days, basically the total number of cases and the total number of deaths were about the same. So the next day, I believe it went up to four cases and then three deaths and then five cases and then four deaths. And today we're seeing it at 12 uh, total deaths and 47 cases. So those cases really cannot be accurate. And in fact, doing some digging on what's happening there in Iran, there's this article here we can take a look at. This is talking about the deaths in Iran, and this is actually quoting it a bit higher. Apparently, there was a uh, semi-official news agency that said that 50 people had died. So that's quite a bit higher than what we're seeing there on the official statistics of just having a dozen or so dead. Um, now, why are these numbers so high? Well, there are a few reasons um, that could be. Um, one of the things that are mentioned here in this article is that the nurses don't have protective gear. Uh, and then another quote here saying, so far I have, I think this means to say I have not seen any particular action to confront corona by the administration. So dragging their feet to take care of these things. It's also a uh, election season there in Iran. And that could be a reason that they don't want to make this thing a, a big deal. But in any case, you're seeing that the numbers are going up very high and likely much more cases than are being reported. So all across the world you're seeing similar things. You're seeing different uh, shutting down of schools, lockdown of cities in Korea. We're hearing more and more from our friends, even in parts of Korea that are far from uh, the original infected area there in, in Daegu and Cheongdo uh, that are reporting there are many sick in the hospital. Uh, there's a lot of uh, panic buying. There's a lot of scary things that are happening out and about. So. Again, we're just seeing the same thing again and again that we saw here in China and now in Korea, Italy, Iran, and likely there will be more countries, more cases as we go on. Now, I, I realize that as some people see this, the skeptics uh, among you are going to say, it still doesn't seem like that big of a deal. <laughs> the numbers seem low. Uh, even if it's 10%, that uh, die from this thing. Well, 9 out of 10 is not bad. I'm very healthy. I'm very robust. I'll be able to survive it. And you probably will. The vast majority of people that get this will be okay. The problem is a couple of things. Number one is what happens when a hospital's overwhelmed. So what we're seeing with this, this coronavirus is not that a hospital gets in 50 or even 100 patients. They're getting hundreds of patients. They are unable to test and care for all the people coming in the doors. We've seen that in Wuhan. We're seeing it now in Korea. It seems that the same thing is happening there in Iran as well. So that is the problem. Now imagine if you're at home and your wife or yourself are pregnant and you need to give birth. Well, now what do you do? You can't go to the hospital. Um, what if you need to get chemotherapy treatments? You can't do that either. What if you get into a car accident and need surgery, but the hospital is overrun with infected people? You can't do that either. So it really changes a, a lot of things just in terms of health care, uh, what the doctors and nurses are able to do if they're overworked, if they're overwhelmed. And it does seem that with this particular disease, it spreads so quickly that hospitals quickly become overwhelmed. The other issue is what happens with the economy. Uh, here in China, there are a lot of people that are very worried about their jobs. Um, we've been in basically on lockdown, not exactly lockdown, but we've been restricted for about a month. Many people have not worked for over a month, and that could last. It could last for another week. It could last for another month. They're not sure. Now, would you be able to pay your mortgage? Would you be able to pay your car payments, your, your credit card payments, if you didn't go to work for two months? How would that work? So these are things to think about. Um, again, I, I say it every time. I don't want to cause panic here, but I am extremely concerned with this because of how quickly it's spreading and how little information or how little news is being um, made on this thing in certain countries. It seems that a country only really pays attention once they have an outbreak and then it becomes becomes news. So in the last video, if you're curious about what things you can do to prepare, in the last video I talked about those things. I'm not going to repeat that here. You can go to that update, update number eight. I'll talk about some things you can do to prepare. Some other things you might want to keep in mind is if you're planning on making some big investments in the near future, you might want to hold off on that. Um, it, it just seems like so many things are changing so quickly. The economy is definitely going to take a hit from what's happened in China. And if it continues to spread, that's going to affect 
affect other markets. That's going to affect uh, other other economies around the world. So be cautious. Uh, this is not a great time, I think, to get into debt. Um, tighten up your purse strings maybe a little bit. Find ways to cut some corners in spending. Um, maybe in in um, the kind of groceries that you buy, the places that you go out to eat. Try to see if you can live a little bit simply. That way, if this thing does come, you're kind of already in this habit of living simply. And maybe you have a little bit of savings from when you lived a little bit simply. These are just some suggestions um, that you might want to take in mind. Uh, we're glad that we live the way we do here. We always have lived below our means, and that's really paying off in spades for us now because we have a little bit of savings, so even though work is reduced, we're okay. But the same cannot be said for many others. So play it safe, uh, be wise, and as always, stay healthy. And we'll see you next time.